Hi, have you ever wondered how to get an ancient piece of hardware such as the Apple IIe that you see in front of you, originally from the 1970s, um, how to get it on the internet? Well, I'm going to show you. What you're going to need is a few little things, a few little sneaky things. Uh, first of all, this box here on your left hand side is the Raspberry Pi. It's a modern little box, you can buy them online for about 30, 40, 50 dollars, uh, depending on where you are. And all it is is a little ARM CPU uh, embedded type uh, box. And uh, you can see on the right hand side there it has an SD card, and the SD card has the Linux operating system on it. So um, that's called a Raspberry Pi Pi. All right, so you can find one of those online. <clears throat> you also notice here we've got a RS232 null mode M cable. Probably seen those before if you you've been around older computers. It's what we used to use before USB. And you see this little connector on the uh, on the end here. Uh, that's a USB to RS232 dongle. So basically, that turns the RS232 cable here, the standard analog type or standard digital type RS232 connector, into a USB connector. And you can see that that is going from the back of this USB, yeah, this uh, RS232 cable into this USB cable right here onto the Raspberry Pi. And the other end of this RS232 cable goes into the Apple II. And it connects up to the Apple Super Serial Card. So you can pick up a Super Serial Card, which is just a serial card, um, a serial adapter, online for, uh, well, on eBay for whatever it turns up at. But basically you, you must have a serial port on your Apple II. And I've got a bunch of connectors on the back of that to make it the right connector. But basically that's all there is involved in, in terms of hardware. I've had a few other things in there that make it a lot easier. Uh, for example, I don't have to use these guys anymore. I've got something called um, a CFFA 3000, which is basically a USB um, interface for the Apple II. So I've super modded this Apple II to bring it up into the, the future a little bit. So you can see I've got the CF CFFA 3000 menu and it asks me to boot the uh, the, the, the volume which I have installed off the USB uh, USB disk which I've got in the back. So I'll just boot that up and I've got an image on here which I downloaded from that website which you can see on the screen there apple2.ivanx.com and uh, the gentleman Ivan, Dre um, Ivan Dreher that um, has created this um, this technology is, is basically um, it's called it Raspberry 2. Okay, so it's a little uh, SD card you can download from the web uh, that will fit into the uh, the Raspberry Raspberry Pi and give it all the software that you require for for this setup. You can also download it onto an existing Raspberry Pi just by using the Linux wget command. If you head over to apple2.ivanx.com, all the instructions are over there. So um, without further ado, let's see it in action. So what you need to do is run, launch the I find more um, more work better with the Proterm program. So I just launched the Proterm program, initializing modem. This may look familiar to those of you who used to use BBSs back in the day. Online parameters, we need to make sure that the parameters are set properly for the connection. So we'll set it back to, yes, 4800 bits per second. This is not fast, people. This is slow-mo. And we'll make sure that emulation is set to VT100. That's the type of emulation to make sure everything looks correct on the screen. Switch off the status bar. We don't need this big bar along the top. And then finally make sure that we go online. Once you've set all those parameters, hit OK. And you'll be connected to your, uh, your uh, Raspberry Pi. Now you're saying, well, that's great, I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi. And that's a, that's a feat all of its own, but how do I actually get online? Well, <clears throat> obviously it's a Linux box, and a Linux box is connected to the internet via this little piece of Ethernet. So that's no great mystery how this is connected to the internet. Let's have a look at what you can do via the command line in Linux. But it appears obviously that you're running it on your Apple II, and all your commands are entered via your Apple II. So effectively, you could hide this little box here and you'd never know that you're running 
anything other than a normal Apple II. So I did see there was a little bit of trickery involved here. I've set up some programs here. This, this program that I'm running here is called Screeny. Um, and the reason why I'm running Screeny is it allows me to jump from program to program quite quickly. Um, and I've set up some running programs here. You can see here A2 Chat, A2 News, uh, the Bash, which is the, um, the shell, and also TTY, TTER. And I'll show you each one of those programs because they're quite interesting. Uh, first, I'll show you TTY, TTER. What is it? It's Twitter. <laughs> so you didn't think that you could get Twitter running on a 1977 type computer? Well, you'd be wrong. Here it is, and um, here's all my tweets uh, that are coming through. And they all update in real time as tweets come through. Um, you can post a tweet just simply by typing it in. And the tweet is sent. You'll have to take my word for it. All right, so I did say that I was running that screeny program. It allows me to uh, jump quickly from program to program. So I'll just jump back by using the... the uh... So you can see that when I pressed Control A and then pressed D, it detached me from the current screen session and gave me back my menu, which I've preset up with these applications. So I've come out of the TTY, TTER, Twitter, uh, for the TTY, and I'll launch the Apple II chat program. And you can see here, I've been chatting away to people on IRC, the Internet Relay Chat, for those of you not in the, in the know. And you can simply run that program, uh, it'll take you straight into um, IRC Chat. You can run any channel, but um, Ivan X has uh, made a little um, script which runs you into the A2 Chat channel, which uh, A2C.chat, which allows you basically to talk to people who are probably doing similar things to this. So... There's me, I'll just say hello to everybody. I don't think anyone will speak back in time, but... Fortunately, somebody has said hello. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just move from another program. The next program we'll do is A2 News, Apple II News. And uh, if you've ever used the Usenet, um, use, news, uh, internet news relays, then uh, you'll know what this is all about. If you've not, this is probably something a little bit new to you. But um, before, uh, before the World Wide Web, there was places that you could get news on the internet or have discussions um, with multiple people. Now, it's still live and well today. Uh, so Usenet is uh, available here. And uh, this is, uh, eight, if you type in A2 News in your Raspberry 2, you can, uh, you can get specific channels of news which are related just to the Apple II. And you can see one of them here, Comp Sys Apple II. Let's have a look at that one. Just connecting up. And you can see that people have written various things there. We can have a look at uh, one of the news articles and see what people are saying. And you can reply to the, the thread and be involved in what people are saying online. So that's pretty cool. Let's come out of that one and finally let's go and see one of the things which is really handy and that is email. Everybody needs their email, right? So it's connecting up to my Gmail inbox, sorting out all my email, oh, and I've got some new mail from the next web. I'll just go down to that one and have a look. Tell me all about how to write a to-do list that won't hurt my productivity. Fantastic. I feel enlightened already. So there you go. That's a, that's a very quick tutorial on how you can use your Raspberry Pi with an Apple II together to make you have an internet-connected uh, 1970s sensation. <laughs>
or something like that. Any questions, drop them in the comments or on my blog, which is apple2.aliross.co.uk. Thanks for watching.